So if like me, you recently got a traveler's notebook and maybe you haven't used one previously, or if you're just looking for some more inspiration for traveler notebook layouts, you have come to the right place. Welcome to this video. Today, we're going to have a look at 30 different layout ideas for your traveler's notebook. Now, while you can use a traveler's notebook for a bunch of different things, and if you want some ideas on what you can use a blank notebook for, I do have a video with a hundred different ideas. For today, we're mainly focusing on bullet journaling layouts. So how you can use this traveler's notebook as a bullet journal. The notebook that we're looking at today is from Archer and Olive, and if you want to grab yourself a traveler's notebook after seeing these layouts, you can jump over to Archer and Olive and use my code JASHIKURIN10 for 10% off your order. But without further ado, let's get into it. The first idea we have here is actually just inside the front cover, and this is to have a front cover flip out. For the flip out that I'm using here, I've just used a greeting card saying scootin' on by to say hi. And if we open this up, you can see we've got some extra goodies in here. On the side that's attached to the journal, I've just put in a little quote and some decoration, but on the part that actually flips out, so the part you'd be able to see from any page in the notebook as you're working through it, on this one is where I've put in things like a key, a color code, I've put down a page size reference, so it tells me how many squares across and down each of the notebook pages are, and I've also got a reset checklist. What you put on here is completely up to you, but the general idea is that it would be information that you'd want to reference again and again. So for instance, things like the key, things like the page size, etc. Because the greeting card that I've used doesn't actually have dock grid paper, I've just taken a little bit of dock grid paper off my Archer and Olive notepad and stuck that to the inside of this card so I could use that dock grid to make sure everything lined up nice and straight. Flipping over, the next layout idea we have is an index. Now, I know a lot of people don't use an index, and the Archer and Olive journals don't come with numbered pages, but this is certainly something that some people like to have at the front of their journal. Here you can see I've just added in some washi tape for decoration, and you can see that I've used some acrylographs for our heading. These are going to be repeated elements through all of the pages, just to make them all tie together nicely. This list is also a bit of a spoiler for the pages we have coming up, so flipping over, we have one style of future log. This is a vertical style of future log, so we've got a mini calendar for the four months at the start of the year, and then underneath these is where you would list out your events. I've also shown here that you don't just have to list out events either. You can put down some tasks that you want to do in specific months. So for instance, change heater filters or flip mattresses, etc. On this style, you can see that I have color coded the future log. So the colored dots underneath each of the calendar correspond to the colored circles we have in the calendar. If this style of future log wasn't really for you though, we do have another style. So while this one is vertical, our next one I consider more to be horizontal. So we have a wider horizontal space for each of those months. Again, I've done the color coding trick, so having the colored dots and the colored circles on the mini calendars, and I filled in some of the extra space in the boxes just with some stickers for decoration. You may note that all of the materials that I'm using in this setup are from the Archer and Olive subscription box, so this video kind of doubles as an example of how you can use the materials from that one. Flipping over though, another start of journal setup we have is a 20 to do in 2022 list. Of course, this could be 20 to do in 2023, 2024, etc. But effectively, it's just a list of things that you want to achieve in the year. This one again, I've set up with some washi tape for decoration, but really the structure of this one is just a simple list of the things you want to accomplish. Something to note is that the vertical spacing in this traveler's notebook is only 19 centimeters. So if you want a list of 20 things, they won't be able to take up one centimeter each. You'd either have to have two columns of 10 centimeters if you wanted things to be evenly spaced, or you can do as I've done and just make it so that each of our items only takes up half a centimeter, or one of our vertical dot grid spacings. For our list of 20 things here, I've considered nested items to be the things we're counting. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Because the traveler's notebook is longer than it is wide, this makes it really suitable for more vertical style layouts, like the year in pixels that we have here. While when you set up a year in pixels in an A5 size notebook, you have a lot of horizontal space left over, doing it in the traveler's fits a lot nicer. For this one, I've put the title down the side of the page rather than along the top, 
and this space at the top I've left open for a key. The way the year in pixels works is that you just set up your key based on whatever it is you want to track. A lot of people track their mood. I've done a tracker like this previously, tracking my spending. Some people might track their anxiety or their productivity. But using the example of mood, you'd have your little color code, which represents the different moods that you might have. And then for any day in the year, you'd put down the colored dot that represents your mood for that day. So January 1st, we have that golden yellow mood. Then January 2nd, we've got the golden again. January 3rd, we have the pink, so on and so forth. Flipping over though, the next layout we have is a when did I last layout. Depending on how long you actually want to use your journal for, you might not need to list out all of the months of the year. I have in this layout though. But the way this one works is that you list your tasks down the side, your months along the top, and then for any month that you've done that task, you write in the day number that you did it underneath the corresponding initial. So for instance, for this hypothetical person, one of their tasks was to change their alarms. Maybe that means change alarm batteries, but because I've listed out all the months, there's not a lot of space to write here. And they have changed their alarm batteries on the 1st of March, the 1st of June, the 1st of September, and the 1st of December. Their second task they have is their toothbrush heads, so maybe replacing their toothbrush heads. They did this on the 15th of February, the 16th of May, the 14th of August, and the 12th of November, etc. One thing about a when did I last layout is that sometimes you don't have tasks that need to be done on a monthly basis or even a quarterly basis. Maybe they need to be done on an annual basis. And rather than having them in a layout like this, where it might be a bit difficult to track when you've done those things based on the fact that these are the months at the top, not years. I've also included a section down the bottom for those infrequent tasks. So for instance, this hypothetical person got their heaters serviced in November of 2019. They still want to record that information, but it can't really be recorded in this one. The next layout idea we have is a weekly tracker. And you can see this is kind of actually two layout ideas in one, really depending on what it is you want to keep track of. So I've split the page in half. We've got the first 26 weeks of the year here and then the second 26 here. And then we have two different styles of tracking. You could be tracking something on a scale, which effectively makes a little line graph at the end of the year, or you could be tracking the completion of tasks. So maybe on this side, a pink dot means that that thing was done. You'd have a little key at the top here to represent what those tasks were and a grey dot might represent that it wasn't done. This one on the left, however, instead of having the tasks at the top, you'd have a scale. So it could be the extent to which something was done. Possibly like an average step count for the week, your weight in a weekly weigh-in, the average number of cups of water you drank, anything that you can record on a scale. Flipping over, we have another style of weekly tracker, and this one's a horizontal style rather than a vertical. To get this one to fit, I've split the year into four quarters. And again, you can see I've given you some different examples of how you might be tracking things. So you could track one item, again, on a scale. You could track two items on a scale, which would be nice to be able to see any patterns that happen between those two things. You could track tasks, or you could track something on a range. So my thought with this one in particular was thinking about weight tracking. So let's just say that you do a daily weigh-in. Maybe the top of the bar was your heaviest weight for the week, and the bottom of the bar was your lowest weight for the week. This allows you to see the overall pattern in your weight throughout that period, without having to worry about your one weigh-in day for the week being influenced by something that was a little bit out of the ordinary. The next idea we have here is a Kanban board layout. And I've written a little note that this is for projects with a consistent sequence of steps or stages. You write a project on a sticky note and then move it to the relevant stage as needed. So in this person's Kanban board, they have the ideas section, research, the first draft, the editing stage, and the ready stage. So as a project moves from one stage to another, they can just move the sticky note to the relevant section. For instance, let's just say project four actually is done with in terms of the research stage. They can just pull out that sticky note and put it into the first draft stage. Flipping on over and onto our next layout idea, this one is a grid spacing guide. Typically people do like to put their grid spacing guide in a very easy to reference place. So maybe the very first layout in their journal or at the back of their journal 
or much like our little flip out that we had at the start, you can do a flip out version of your grid spacing guide. But here's the one that I've set up for the traveler's notebook. So the traveler's notebook in terms of the halfway marks, the halfway mark horizontally comes 19 squares down the page and the vertical halfway mark is nine and a half across. So you can see I've drawn it in the middle of this dot grid box. I've also marked in the thirds going down the page. So 12 boxes and then a space, 12 boxes and then a space, 12 boxes. And I've marked the quarters going across the page. So we have four boxes, then a space, four, space, four, space, four. Another one that I've put in is what I've called the weekly spacing. So this is separating our page into seven equally spaced sections. And this was most easily done working horizontally. So we have five boxes up for each of those. So Sunday, Saturday, Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, and then a little section at the top that could be for a header. When setting up a grid spacing guide, do make sure that you're using grid spacings that are actually going to be helpful for you. There's no point in putting in these quarters if you're never gonna divide the page into quarters. The next idea we have is a style of monthly tracker. So this one you can see is styled in the way of a bar graph. We have the months of the year running down the page here, and then we have a scale along the top. The scale that I've used is just in numbers. So maybe this could be average monthly step count or a certain amount of savings or something like that. What scale you use very much depends on what it is you're tracking. And while I just have decoration down the bottom here, this could be a space for some journaling, a key, an overall yearly summary or total, whatever works for whatever you're tracking. Flipping over, we have another style of monthly tracker. And rather than being scale based, this one is based on task completion. So we have a little key at the top here to represent our different tasks. Maybe the little house means some kind of house cleaning task. Maybe the little sweeping broom means sweeping, etc. that kind of stuff. Again, we've got the months down the side here though, and you can just tick off when you've done those tasks for the relevant months. So for instance, this person did do the house task in January, they didn't do the little broom task. They did do the little dollar sign task, etc. Again, we've got just that decoration down the bottom, but you could use this for those yearly totals. So maybe how many times did you actually do the house task? How many times did you do the broom task, etc. Or like we said, you could use it for something else. Another style of monthly tracker we have has each of the months separated out from each other. And you can see I had eight little yellow dots with a key down the bottom to show what those icons represent. Rather than listing these out as task one, task two, you'd actually write in what the tasks were. So we can see that in January, this person did do task one, which is represented with a smiley face. They didn't do task two, which was represented with a lightning bolt. They did do task three, the little heart. Task four, the little Wi-Fi symbol. Task five, the little dollar sign but they didn't do task six, which was the little house icon. I have made my icons pretty small on this one, but there is plenty of space to make those bigger. While in this one I based it off doing set tasks, you could again make this scale based by having a little box underneath each of the headers for the months that you color in a certain amount to indicate the amount of completion that that thing had or how much you did that thing. Flipping over and we have another layout where things are broken down by month, but this one I've just called the monthly list. For this we've sectioned up each of the different months of the year and we've got space to record four things that might need to be done in those months. While I do just have this one on an individual page, you could make this go across a full spread and put six of the months on one page and the other six on the other. This would be a good layout to use for things like set projects that you want to do in any given month or tasks that get done on a monthly basis that you wanna record. One example that comes to mind might be house projects, in particular house projects that are done on a quarterly basis, but rather than doing every single quarterly project in one month out of the three months, you could split those up across the quarter. So four of the projects in January, and then four of the projects in Feb, and four of the projects in March. And then when you get to April, you repeat the projects from January. And in May, you repeat the projects from February, etc. Our next layout idea is a goal plan. And in this goal plan, we have a space to list out what the goal is, why you want to achieve that goal, the one-off actions you need to complete, 
the monthly actions, weekly actions, daily actions, and a tracking space at the bottom. In this person's goal, their goal has been to save $1,000 in the next 90 days, and they've written out a bunch of different things they can do to reach that goal. At the bottom, the little tracker we have here, this one has each gray dot representing $20 saved, and as they save it, they can tick off that dot. Some goals may require you to have a lot more steps, so it might not be suitable to just have the one page, but that's where you could use multiple pages, whether it be a full spread or more. Flipping over, and then we are into our monthly log ideas. So the first monthly log we have is very much akin to the original bullet journal method, just writing out the numbers for the days of the month down the side of the page, and then next to those you can list out all your events. In this one I've color coded those dots so that the yellow ones represent the weekdays, Monday through Friday, and the grey ones represent the weekend. While you could just represent this by writing the initial for each day of the week beside the dot, you might need all of the space you can get horizontally. So instead we just put it in with a color code and you've minimized the number of spaces you've taken up with the days of the week and the numbers for the month. On to the next page we have another monthly log idea, but this one has a mini calendar, some decoration, and at the bottom here is where we've listed out those numbers for the days of the month. Given the size of the mini calendar here, where each of the boxes is one centimeter by one centimeter, there is a bit of spare space left over, so you can fill this with decoration, quotes, little mini trackers if you wanted to. I'm not thinking trackers on a daily basis, but more trackers that might be statistic based. So that could be a statistic that you like to keep track of and what it was at the start versus the end of the month. For instance, you'll see a lot of people on YouTube keeping track of their subscriber statistics. So what their subscribership was on the first of the month and at the end of the month. But for you, this could be something like your savings total, what your weight is, your completion percentage on a project you're doing, any stat that you're keeping track of. Flipping over and we have another monthly log idea, but rather than being a one page monthly log, this one takes up the full spread. You can see we have a calendar layout here, a section for a to-do list, and then at the bottom we've got a habit tracker. So listing out what the habits are and then putting the numbers of the days of the month so that you could track all of those things. Obviously with this style of layout, the writing space is smaller. So you probably want to have things that are very small to write down, like have small titles or have small handwriting. I do think it's a cute layout though and I like the combination of the calendar with the tracker. On to our next layout and we're into our habit tracker ideas. So the first habit tracker we have here is the mini calendar habit tracker and given the spacing that I've used I can fit 10 mini habit trackers on this page. For the extra space that we have down the side I've just put in some washi tape for decoration though you could put in a page header along the side of the page. And you might have noticed that for some of the washi tape that we've got in this, I've added some extra little elements, some extra little pops of color, just using the acrylograph pens that came in the subscription box. So for instance, these little blue lines down here, those little orange dots, some little orange flecks in this yellow section, and some extra blue dots at the side here. I do like that the acrylographs go over the washi tape really nicely and remain super opaque. It's just a way to make the washi tape a little bit more your own and can really help fit it in with any design elements that you're including in your journal. The next habit tracker idea we have though is the vertical habit tracker. So listing out the days of the month down the side and then we've got some icons along the top to represent what those habits are. As this person completes their habits, they can just tick off the ones they've done and maybe put a dot or a cross to represent the ones that they haven't done. So for instance, hypothetical person on the first of the month has done the lightning bolt task. They haven't done the one with the tick. So maybe that was being productive or recording their progress or something. They've done the one for the heart, done the smiley face, not done the home. And we're going to say that they have done the rest except for getting to bed on time, which hits very close to home. <laughs> Flipping over though, and here we have what I'm calling the extended list. So as you might have noted, there isn't a lot of horizontal space in the traveler's notebook. And one way you can get around this on certain layouts is to add a tip in that makes it so that you have more horizontal space. So here you can see without the tip in, we would have two columns that they can write their tasks in or events or whatever it is they're listing. But with the tip in, this adds an additional column. 
you can just stick that in with washi tape like we have here and it just folds back on itself to stay contained on the one page. But while we only had two columns of space originally, we now have three horizontally and the one on the other side of the tip-in. I love tip-ins, I think they're super helpful, like the one that we had at the front and the one we've got here. And if you want to find out more about tip-ins and how you can make and use them, do be sure to check out my video related to that one. On this layout though, you can see we have what is called the flipped calendar layout. So it is just a regular calendar layout, except you would flip the journal to be able to use it. So you can see here we've got Monday through Sunday, and then each of the boxes on this calendar grid are five across by three down. That is, once you've flipped the notebook. While I've written the title at the top of the page, you could also rotate this so that it's in line or in the same orientation as the calendar. This one could be used for something like a monthly log or a word of the day or some kind of tracker, really anything you like. Flipping over though, and the next layout we have is a productivity tracker. So in this one, you can see we've got a bunch of little boxes for each of the days of the month. And in the middle here, we have a little Dutch door, which is set up to house a key. This is another layout that I have a separate video on. So if you want to see how you might use a layout like this, do be sure to check it out. The productivity tracker is probably one of my favorite layouts, honestly. I love using it and I love how it looks at the end of the month when it's all filled in. But essentially all of these little icons represent a way to be productive based on your definition of productivity. What is a productive task for you? And then as you do those tasks in any given day, you just draw them into the boxes. And at the end of the month, you effectively end up with a little bar graph that shows you how productive you were throughout the month. So for example, this hypothetical person on the first has done the productivity tasks related to the little document, the Facebook icon and the little house. On the second, they did the ones related to the heart, the book, the little document, the pencil and the Netflix icon. And then on the third, they've done the one with the little person, the lightning bolt, the little no sign, and the book. And then as they do more things throughout the month, they can fill it in. Flipping over though, and we are into our weekly log ideas. So the first weekly log idea we have here has a section for each day of the week on the left hand side, and then a space for a running task list on the right. Obviously, as this is just a page idea, I've written weekly log on mine, but if you were to use this layout, you might write in the dates that this weekly was for. So for instance, like the 3rd to the 9th of July or something like that. So this is one weekly log idea. Our next weekly log idea has the eight boxes or what I call an eight box layout. So taking each of the pages and dividing them into four boxes. One of these boxes though, you can see you'd use for something other than a daily task list. So you could use it for decoration, or a decorative header, making your title bigger, putting in a little tracker, using it for notes, whatever you want. Another weekly layout style, instead of dividing the page into four boxes, in this one I've divided it into six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Obviously seven of these boxes are used for those daily task lists and the other boxes you can use again for whatever you want. As you can see, I've just used them for decoration using washi tape, but maybe this one's for notes, that's a habit tracker, a water log, a meal tracker for dinners, and a steps log or something like that. Up next, the layout idea we have here is a themed list. So this is taking the page, dividing it into however many sections you need, and then having each of those sections be related to a different life area. The three that I've put here are home, work, and personal. And then inside of those boxes, you list out whatever tasks you have to do that come underneath those headings. Of course, these are just example categories. You can have whatever categories you like. I've also put these boxes horizontally, but if you don't need as much horizontal room to write, you could list them out vertically instead. Really depends on the size of your handwriting. The next page we have is a daily log. And this one in particular is a daily log with a time scale down the side. So you can see the time scale runs from 5 a.m. to 12 midnight or 12 a.m. And then for this day, this person has color coded each of their different time blocks. So we've got the sleep section, the morning routine, travel, work, lunch, more work, more travel, their workout time, their cooking time, 
leisure time, evening routine, and sleep again. Rather than just listing out what each of these sections means, they've also included their task list on here. So their morning routine, they have the tasks of journaling, watering their plants, and texting their mum. In the work section, they've got a bunch of different tasks that they can do for work in the morning, and then they've also got a bunch of tasks they want to do for work in the afternoon. As part of their workout tasks, they also have logging their workout. As part of their cooking task, they have the preparation of lunch for the next day and dinner along with the dishes and on this day preparing a shopping list. They've listed out what they're doing for their leisure time and what they need to do as part of their evening routine. As I said, the nice part about the Traveler's Notebook is that because it is longer than it is wide, it's really good for vertical layouts like this. Flipping over, and the next layout we have is what I'm gonna call a meal log or planner. So you can see we have each of the days of the week running down the spread, and then along the top here we've listed out the different meal types. Of course, you don't have to use a layout like this as a meal logger planner. You could use it for a schedule, say that these were different time periods during the day or possibly even different categories of tasks that you need to do. You could also use a layout like this for goal tracking as well. So say that you have six different goals or goal areas and you want to list out what you want to do for each of them throughout a week. As mentioned, these layouts are just ideas and you can use them any way you want to. They do not have to be used for the uses that I have in the examples. Hopefully you found these ideas useful, and if you're looking for even more bullet journal ideas and inspiration, be sure to check out the playlist that I have linked on the screen here. As always team, thank you for watching, and until next time, bye!